Uh, my name is Alex Peoples, and I'm 16 years old. I live in West Ashley. My name's Austin Singletary. I'm 15 years old, and I live in uh, North Charleston. Hi, my name is Rachel Hunsinger, and I am a 15-year-old at Charleston County School of the Arts. I live in West Ashley. That I have a job. Uh, it's a very local business, and it's the business is predominantly African American. Uh, I'm really the only white person who wor who works for this business, and whenever I'm doing my job selling things. Um, the question or the statement that I hear the most is, you're the wrong color. Uh, pe people sometimes say, I didn't know that they hired white boys. And that comes from both African Americans and Caucasians. I've never really had a lot of experience with racism or discrimination until I got to middle school, whereas a lot of the people that I consider, you know, my people, black people, they've, you know, kind of treated me differently and they knew that I was different so they didn't like it and it, it, it really hurt for a while. And I'm a Christian for one and two, um, I kind of like to have my pants on my waist and <laughs> and I don't listen to rap. I really don't like rap. That. But being at a new school has changed my whole outcome of life. Ashley. My personal experience with prejudice has to do with my religion. I am a conservative Jew in West Ashley with a Baptist who used to be Baptist father and a Jewish mother and being raised in this society as a Jewish person is difficult when people assume that you can't be Jewish because of your father, you can't be Jews Jewish based on your family and the way that people think of it they use jokes and they joke about Jewish jokes and stuff like that and it's they're very naive it's the idea that naivety is how they can think of my religion which doesn't make sense to me and it makes it hard for me to talk to them about it and them completely understanding Hello, my name is Katherine Murchison. I'm 15 years old, and I recently moved to Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Hey, I'm Jess Ramis. I am from Mount Pleasant, and I'm 16. Um, oh, I'm Miles Counts. I live in the West Ashley side of Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm 15 years old. Um, my father is an African-American male, and my mother is Caucasian. She's Italian. And so my entire life, I've kind of been sheltered from the prejudice associated with either race, but I have noticed recently since I moved to South Carolina that the schools and the communities, they're segregated in some ways, but in others they are much more integrated than they are in the North. And I'm coming to the realization that people make lots of assumptions when they see your race because unlike your religion or your sexual preference or anything like that, race isn't really anything that you could hide from the world. It's, it's clear, it's there, it's your skin color. And, and it's you. been the source for ruthless prejudice. And I actually haven't faced much or as much as I would maybe if I was completely white or completely black. Being half and half, I kind of have to see both and it's, it's, hard to stay, it's hard to stay neutral, but I'm trying. I'm 16. Um, personally, I haven't experienced racism head on, but I've had to deal with the cultural transitions my parents had to go through when they moved from uh, South Dakota, which is primarily white. Although like, we don't have to deal with the same problems they do there, there's all, racism is just another construct there, and it ha takes on different faces. But as we, I gradually, we live in a more integrated society, it becomes less of a problem, and I'm happy for that. And I wouldn't say I've gone up against specific prejudice, but I do think that I, as long as other black males living in the South, have gone up against certain assumptions Assumptions that have been so ingrained in both black and white culture. Some uh, people assume the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I conduct myself is indicative of my color, which is something that is completely untrue. They, they fail to see the true human side of me that's complex, who has desires and fears, and uh, they see me as some sort of dull caricature, which I, I hope to change when I get older by the way I conduct myself. My name is Kate Hamrick. I'm 14 years old and I live in James Island, South Carolina. 
Hi, I'm Emily Fairchild. I'm 15 and I live in Mount Pleasant. Uh, my name is Will Isaacson. I live in West Ashley. I am 16 years old and I'm a junior at Charleston County School of the Arts. My experience with prejudice is that I've had some family friends that I've known for years that decided early on in their lives that they did not agree with interracial relationships. And they like to bring this up a lot around our family and other people because they want to make what they think is a difference in the society. And when I try to object to that, they sign me up as wrong. And because of that, I feel uncomfortable about talking about these sort of subjects around them. And it's hard to get my voice out there. I, I'm incredibly feminist as a person, and I believe that there aren't differences in people based on who they are on the outside, race, gender, where they're from. That isn't a huge deal in who they are as a person. And yet, the other day I was watching the Super Bowl, and there were, say, flower ads for Valentine's Day that quite clearly, I mean, no, there was no subtlety about it, made women into sex objects and women into a car you might want to buy. And, you know, my brother's like, I don't understand why this is such a big deal, except for the fact that I've seen that in some people's eyes, that's all I can be. And so I fight against that by being intellectual and by telling my sister that I don't think how she looks matters. But I see that it matters to her and in the way people view every girl that I know. And every girl that I know has dealt with this. And I think it's a huge problem. And if we continue sending messages to people that it's just a joke or it's just an ad and you observe that every day, nothing will change. Was it when I was in ninth grade, me and my friends aren't particularly Christian. And um, we all sit together at lunch. And we actually, from other people that were were Christian, sort of um, gave us the tag of the atheist group. And everyone sort of started getting a predisposed um, stereotype according to us, like saying some people thought we like believed in like worshiping Satan and stuff like that. And it actually got to the point where not, some people wouldn't even sit around our lunch table. So it was just sort of, it was sort of disheartening to feel like all these peers that you associate with every day, their views just change because of what some person thinks or says. Hi, I'm Abby Rumpf. I am uh, 15 and I live in Mount Pleasant. And Hi, my name is Joel Chapman. Um, I am 17 years old. I go to School of the Arts. I'm a junior and I live in North Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, my name is Ariel Casper. I'm 16 years old. I live in Mount Pleasant and I go to Charleston County School of the Arts. My experience with um, prejudices and with people generalizing a group of people based on what they've seen or heard in the media um, has been to the extent of religion. Um, I'm a Christian and I come from not a full Christian family, but even as I have gotten like older, people assume that Christians hate gays and that we're hypocritical beings. And if you actually look at what the Bible says and about forgiveness and love, like all of these things if, if, if Christians went by what the Bible says, it would be a completely different thing. It's not really about religion, it's about, you know, sacrifice and... Part of prejudice that I've experienced is probably the general stereotype, stereotype of black males particularly. Um, usually they're portrayed as, you know, thugs that have, like, pants way below their waistlines and, like, have, speak with a speech impediment. And when you meet someone that you're tr and you're just trying to casually have conversation and they totally disregard anything that you say because you sound eloquent or intelligent, as I like to say. Um, they just totally disregard and say, oh, you're just like them or what's going on? You're just totally living a double life. But like, no, this is how I am. My mom raised me to have perfect grammar because that's the way that she was raised. And so it kind of passed down, and I never familiarized with that stereotype. One thing, I was bullied all through my life, starting from preschool all the way up until last year, which was 10th grade. I pretty small, and people would pick on me for stupid things, but then they would start throwing things at me and hitting me, and I never said anything about it. And it 
really got to a bad point where people were spreading really vicious rumors about me, and they wouldn't even bother to ask me if anything were true. And last year, things kind of got really bad. And my confidence has never been really high. I don't really think highly of myself. I have anxiety issues. I had little weird things about me. I loved to read. I was very artsy, um, very sensitive. And kids just like to target me. I mean, it would start with things like my name and go on the little pictures I would draw and the mm. books I would read. It was just, it was stupid, but it got to a point where I would just say, yes, things are true to make people stop asking me. And so I switched schools. I started, um, you know, reading books about how to bring up my self-confidence and get past it. And um, I talked to some of the friends that I kept about it. And I started talking more openly with my parents about things like this so it doesn't repeat. DeAndre Curtis, 16, and North Charleston. When um, I went to the store and when I walked through the door, a white person came up to me and she was like, can I help you with anything? And I was like, no, I'm just looking. And then when I went to walk over to the side, she came right behind me. And everywhere I went, she was like following me. And then I was like, what are you following me for? And she was like, oh, I'm just, just making sure you don't take anything. I was like, I have money, so I don't need to steal anything. I'm Addison Lewis. I live in Mount Pleasant. I'm 16 years old, and I go to Charleston County School of the Arts. And I'm in 11th grade. Um, I guess what I feel about Black History Month is I'm proud about it because yes there is a month singled out and sometimes it is bad to like segregate yourself because then you get you open yourself to more possibilities to get called out but I'm proud of the things that pe black people have done like in history it is normally oh well they were slaves and they got out and then they were in poverty and then they had the Jim Crow laws and stuff like that. And still everyone's perception is normally a black a black mom without a dad living in a, in the ghetto with drug dealing going around. And that's not how most people live. Like, I'm really proud of my dad because my dad um, was one of the first black people at Georgia Tech University. He was the first out of when he went there, there were only 63 of them, and he started the first Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech Afro-American Association. And so he is one of those people who just puts himself out there and doesn't care what other people think and wants to prove what a black man can do. And that's why I live where I live. That's why I talk how I talk. That's why I am educated because my father believes in putting that view of African Americans out there and I think that's what Black History Month does.